So construction of A, so let's say N is equal to, let's do, uh, uh, for example, N is equal to 100. And we are going to be, A is going to be equal to uh, zeros of N. So A is initialized as all zeros. So if you look at A, A, A is 100 by 100 double. All right. So we are going to loop over I and set the diagonals. So A of I, I is going to be equal to, uh, I forget to set the coefficients. So A has to be 2 kappa <coughs> over delta x squared times 2. Right. So let's break for now. We didn't do anything. I pressed control C. Okay, uh, we need to set kappa, for example, equal to 1. And we set dx is equal to, uh, okay, when n is equal to 100, it should be 1 over n, right? Do you see that clearly, or should I make the font a little bit larger? Anybody wants to make the font larger? Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. I think is in preference. Uh, editor. No fonts. Fourteen. Big enough. Good enough. All right. Okay. So I think I made a bug when I'm initializing A. What's the bug? Should A be a n by n matrix? No, because U goes from 1 to n minus 1, right? So when I have n intervals, I only have n minus 1 unknowns. So A is 0 to n minus 1. So it's a 99 by 99 matrix. So let's uh, go through the loop again. A of I and I is equal to what? Minus 2 kappa divided by delta x squared. Okay. Uh, the square, I it's a usually good idea to dot with it. Otherwise, MATLAB thinks I'm uh, uh, squaring a matrix. So if you look at A, A diagonals has been set to some minus nine, but which is good. All right, that's all we need to look at. Then we need to set the upper and lower diagonals. So we have N diagonals. Uh, by the way, I think I made a mistake again. I looped all the way to N, which makes the matrix 100 by 100 again. So a fix for that is A is equal to 1 to 99, 1 to 99. That will make it back uh, to 99 by 99 again. So this kind of indexing is what MATLAB does to, uh, to index a range of i's. OK, so let's loop over the up and lower diagonals. Let's remember there is only n minus 2 up and lower diagonals. There is n minus 1 diagonals. So a of i and i plus 1 should be there is no minus 2, so just a k divided by delta x squared. So is the uh, lower diagonal. OK, now if you look at A, it's still a 99 by 99 double. It's good. And the up and lower diagonals are something positive. All right, that's good. So let's uh, also construct a B. B is a zeros n minus 1 by 1 matrix, which is a, a column vector. If I just do zeros n minus 1, it'll make me a n minus 1 by n minus 1 matrix. Okay, which is not going to crash my computer in this case, but uh, in, in other cases, uh, I think uh, I was teaching a method that, that uses Monte Carlo method, and Somebody is supposed to make a random number array of something like uh, many millions of, of numbers. So, so there are students who just typed a random n, where n is many millions. So it, it tries to make a random matrix of several million by several million. And uh, the computer hangs there. <laughs> so, so MATLAB is kind of evil uh, in that sense. Be very careful. So 
B is going to be a vector. And the B1 is going to be set to be something special. Okay, so let's set U0 is equal to, let's say, 1. U1 is equal to minus 1. So that, that's the boundary conditions. B1 is then going to be is equal to kappa divided by dx squared times U0. And uh, B at the very last, which in MATLAB you can do B end, is equal to the same thing times u1. Now if you look at b, b is a, is a vector of uh, something, all zeros, and something else. Yes, I use the u1 to denote the, yeah, the solution at x equal to 1, not i equal to 1. Yeah, I understand that, but if you're sort of, I mean, it's not wrong right now, but if you're uh, going to refer to the next cell, if you're going to look at the, the other u's uh, that are in the matrix, then isn't it going to cause some confusion with the long chain relation? Oh, okay, so are you arguing about the naming of the variable? Yeah. Okay, that's and yeah, that's fine. Choice. Yeah, that's fine. So let's do u n is equal to u one, and uh, how do you delete a variable? Delete. Clear. Uh, clear. U one is yeah. that right? Okay, good. So uh, let's let's use our favorite ODE solver here. Uh, new file function dudt. Okay, so let's say dudt ax plus b is equal to dudt of. I need to put t and u. So in, usually a ODE solver expects the solution to be a function of uh, t and u. So ax plus b is equal to a times u, well, it's <coughs> au plus b plus b. All right, that's it. So that's as simple as what the OD solver is going to be. So what I will be doing is uh, I'm going to set u0 into uh, zeros of n minus 1. Oh, n1, right? So that's my initial condition. I'm going to say uh, tu is going to be od45. I first need the function du dt. t span, let's make it, let's solve it for one time units. And my initial solution is u0, and I don't want any options. Undefine the function. Okay, so I have defined a, but do I need to have a global a, b? Okay, let's do that again. Inner matrix dimension must agree. I think you need to put global in the, uh, the command prompt as well. Like this? Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, I see. Okay, so a. Let me see. So I I can look at my history again. I guess. So for i is equal to 1 to m minus 1, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to set my up and lower, and also u, all right, okay, and I'm going to do od solver again, matrix dimension must agree. So if I remember correctly, I think OD45 expects a U to be a row vector. And uh, uh, I'm also supposed to return a row vector. So I'll just do transpose on U and also the result. All right. So when I'm doing this, I'm also going to transpose my initial condition. Yeah, U0 is either. 
That's for the initial Yeah, my initial condition. Thanks. You have to use your uh, the initial and then boundary. Right. Okay, my U0 is fine, and my U is so let's let's try to figure that out. So I'm going to display uh, the size of U to see what this gives me. So the size of U is going to be uh, 99 by 1. So my U0 is 99 by 1. So, so I should not transpose that. I should not have transposed that. Maybe I shouldn't have transposed that either. So let's solve this again. OK, so now that works. Uh, let me get rid of the display to make things go faster. Okay, so now I have a solution U, size of U, which is going to be this much by 99. So this is all the time steps OD45 took. And let's just uh, visualize the last time step. So U of end column. Loaded, uh, uh, let's just uh, close it. So, this is the solution I get after t equal to 1. My initial solution is all zeros. After 1, I get almost a straight line running from minus 1 to uh, from 1 to minus 1. So, the heat equation stretches, smooths out the solution, and make it like that. And if you plot the whole history, I don't know if you can do that like this. Oh, I should plot the transpose. Too many lines to plot. Okay, let me kill this. So, let me just uh, plot several solutions. Still trying to pop up. Okay, so let me plot the tenth time step, for example. The tenth time step, you can see a uh, almost a constant line equal to zero. So the boundary starts to go towards the boundary conditions. So this is the first grid point, x equal to delta x. This is the last grid point, x equal to 1 minus delta x. This starts to go towards 1 and minus 1. If you plot the hundredth, we can see that the solution becomes smoother. right? So that's the behavior of the heat equation. If you plot the thousandth solution, uh, it's, it's being stretched out. And the ultimately, the solution becomes a straight line. So that's when the solution becomes steady state when the time derivative becomes zero, which means the solution doesn't change anymore, what we get, what we get is, uh, is zero equal to the second derivative of u. 